Hi everybody, in this lesson we're going to be talking about confidence, confidence intervals for sample proportions. So this entire lesson is about p hats. We're going to be working with sample proportions for this entire lesson. So recall Mr. Hines's fair coin dilemma. He flipped the coin 100 times and of those 100 flips it landed heads up 64 times. We simulated sampling distributions and decided it was too unusual that this uh, population proportion was 50%. I think we found it was like a 0 0.0030 um, probability. There was a 0.3% chance of getting a P hat of 64% uh, percent or higher. So it's a very unusual outcome. So since we concluded this coin's not fair, the real question is, what is the true population proportion of flipping ahead? It's not a 50-50 split for this coin. What is the true probability, the true, sorry, what is the true proportion of landing heads when you flip this coin? So right now, our best guess is our sample proportion. Our best guess is our p hat, which in this case is 0.64. But there's sampling variability. But we, So our best guess is 64% chance of landing ahead. But we need to take into account sampling variability. We need to take into account sampling variability. There's variability when you take a sample. And I'll draw this for the third time. So we've got a population. And I want to know some fact, some, some characteristic of this population called a parameter. I want to estimate, I want to figure out what's some true value. What is the true proportion, which we use P for proportion. But I can't know that proportion, so I'm going to take a sample. I'm going to take a sample, and there's a lot of variability introduced when I take a sample. So when I take a sample, I can compute a, st a sample statistic. And then I'm going to use that statistic to estimate the parameter. We can use a sample statistic, in this case our p hat, to estimate our parameter. But the key thing is we need to take into account the fact that there was variability. We need to give ourselves some wiggle room. So the way that we do that is we construct something called a margin of error. So our p hat is our best guess at the parameter, but we're going to give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room on both sides of that p hat to just say, yeah, we know that we took a sample. We know variability does exist. So we're going to give ourselves a little, little wiggle room, some margin of error to account for the sampling variability in our sample proportions when you, whenever you find a sample proportion. So the way that we construct this margin of error, so the way that we define margin of error for sample proportions is two standard deviations of that sample proportion. So if we recall from the last lesson, the standard, uh, last week's lessons, the standard deviation for a sample proportion is P1 minus P over N. But the thing is, we don't know that P, we're trying to estimate that parameter. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our P hat there. So this is how we define the margin of error. It's two standard deviations of the sampling distribution. So it's two times the square root of p hat, one minus p hat over n. So what, what we do is we, we add that to p hat and subtract that from p hat to give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. So what we call this is we construct a 95% confidence interval. Sorry, that should say interval there. We construct a 95% confidence interval for the true proportion of heads of Mr. Hines's coin flip. So here's how we do that. We start with our p hat, and then we're going to add and subtract our margin of error. We're going to give ourselves some wiggle room to estimate what our true proportion is. So in this case, it's actually p hat plus or minus two square roots of p hat, one minus p hat over n. So we just need to plug all these values in. So my p hat was 64% plus or minus two square roots of 0.64, one minus 0.64, over 100 coin flips. So if I actually just wanted the margin of error, I can find that. Two square roots of 0.64, parentheses, one minus 0.64 over 100. That's my margin of error. The wiggle room I'm going to give myself is 0.096. So it's 
plus or minus 0 0.096. I actually figured out what that margin of error is. So 0 0.64 plus that margin of error is 0.736. So my upper bound, when I do the plus version of this, I get 0.736. Or if I do the lower bound, when I do the minus version, I get a lower bound for my proportion and I get 0.544. So my interval, my confidence interval, is the interval from 0.544 to 0.736. I used my p hat, and then I gave myself some wiggle room on both sides. I went up a margin of error, I went up two standard deviations, and I also went two standard deviations down. So here's my p hat. I go up two standard deviations, and I subtract away two standard deviations to create my confidence interval here. So what does this interval mean? This interval is our best guess at the true proportion of heads. So we are 95% confident. We are 95% confident that the true proportion of heads for this coin is between 54.4% and 73.6%. We are 95% confident that the true proportion of heads for this coin is between 54.4%, that's my lower bound, and 73.6%. That's my best estimate for this parameter. I had a sample statistic and I'm estimating my parameter by giving myself some wiggle room. I'm, I'm accounting for that sampling variability, that it's somewhere in between these two values. Notice 50% is not in the interval. This gives us evidence. We have evidence that the true proportion, we have evidence, we have statistical evidence, that the true proportion of heads is not 50%. We have evidence the coin is not fair. This means the coin is not fair. We have evidence that it's not fair. It still could be fair. This could be some weird sample, some rare sample that we got, but we have pretty good evidence that it's not. So how do I construct a 95% confidence interval for a sample proportion? I take my p hat, and then I add two standard deviations called the margin of error, and I subtract two standard deviations called the margin of error. And at what is the margin of error? The margin of error is two square roots of p hat, one minus p hat over n. Why do we use two of those margins of error? Well, when we talked about the normal curve um, way back in the beginning, if you go back and look at lesson one, what captures that middle 95% of any normal distribution is that 95%. And the central limit theorem tells us our sampling distributions are normally distributed. So approximately 95% of my sample proportions fall between two standard deviations, fall within two standard deviations of the mean. Um, the real number we should be using is 1.96, but for the sake of simplicity, we pick the number two instead. To determine if students wanted a new football field at the high school, Mrs. Wilhelm used a random number generator to survey 90 students in the building at random. Of the 90 students, 40 of them said they wanted a new football field. She took the data to Mr. Flannery to see if the true proportion could be over 50%. So first of all, what's our sample proportion that we're working with? Mrs. Wilhelm had a sample of 40 over 90. She had 40 kids want it out of 90. So she only got a sample proportion of 44%, 44.4%, which is under 50%, but maybe if we give ourselves some, there's sampling variability, so we got to give ourselves some wiggle room to estimate that true parameter. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to find a margin of error. State the margin of error. Well, the margin of error is two square roots of p hat, 0.444, 1 minus p hat, all over n. How many people did Miss Wilhelm ask? She asked 90. So that's my margin of error. That's, that's what I'm going to add and subtract. Two square roots, nope, not two squared, two square roots of alpha y equals enter, 0.444, 
parentheses 1 minus 0.44, 4, close it, out of 90. She has 90 people. So p hat, 1 minus p hat over n. So my margin of error appears to be 0 0.105, about. Um, 0 0.105 is approximately our margin of error. So now to create the confidence interval, I do p hat plus or minus the margin of error. So 0 0.444 plus or minus 0 0.015. I added on two standard deviations and I'm subtracting it away. So 0 0.444 plus that answer gives me an upper bound and 0 0.444 minus that answer gives me a lower bound. Uh, so 0 0.549 is my upper bound. So my confidence interval is lower comma upper. Lower is 0.339 and my upper is 0 0.549, 0 0.549. That's our confidence interval that we got, which is great that you can compute that because that's actually not too, not too hard. You can all plug into this formula, double it, add, subtract. There's not really crazy math going on there. What does this mean? We are 95% confident of what? We are 95% confident that the true proportion, the true, that the proportion of students who want the new field, who want the new field is between, is between what? 33.9% and 54.9%. So my true proportion, based on accounting for sampling variability here, is between 33.9% and 54.9%. So is it possible that a majority of students support building the new football stadium? Well, it could be. It could be because 50% falls within our interval. 50% um, falls in our confidence interval. So it's a plausible proportion. 50% falls in our interval. It is a plausible value for the true parameter. It is a plausible value for it is a plausible value for the true proportion. So it's possible, we see it right there, that a majority of people, something bigger than 50%, a majority of students support building this new field. That's how confidence intervals are powerful, and that's why they're used a lot in statistics is because they give us some, they give us some wiggle room from our sample to start making predictions and start making inferences about, about data. So here I can make an inference that even though she had a 44% support, maybe it could be over 50%. Maybe that sampling variability is what made it lower. But it also could be lower than 50%. It could be 34%. That could also be the true plausible value. So that's, that's what confidence intervals give us some uncertainty, some even more uncertainty about, about what our parameters could be. But it gives us some evidence and allows us to make some conclusions. So a couple more and then we'll call it a lesson. So the homecoming committee is analyzing their cost and determine they can only hold the homecoming dance if at least 40% of CCHS students attend. They need 40%. They surveyed every 10th student walking into school and determined that approximately 30% of the 120 students surveyed were planning to go. So that's their P hat. They had a sample proportion of 30%. Construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval. Well, how do I make a confidence interval? I do my p hat plus or minus two square roots of p hat, one minus p hat over n. I find a confidence interval. So 0.30 plus or minus my margin of error. Two square roots of my sample proportion, one minus my sample proportion over how many people they asked. That's all I have to do. That's how I make my interval. So let's do that. 0.30 plus two square roots of alpha y equals enter 0.30 times one minus 0.30 over how many people I sampled, which in this case was 126. So that's my upper bound. My upper bound of this interval is 0.382. And my lower bound of this interval, I'm just gonna change that to a minus sign now. I'm going to scroll all the way back here. Scroll, 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 scroll. Up oh, too far, of course. Change that to a minus, and my lower bound is 
So my confidence interval is the interval 0.218 to 0.382. That's my confidence interval for that, for that parameter. Well, interpret the interval that we stated. So what does that interval mean? We are 95% confident. We are 95% confident that the true what? That the true proportion, what's the context of the problem here? The true proportion of students that want to go to homecoming, of students that are going to homecoming, is between, is between what? It's between 21.8% and 38.2%. So that's where I think the parameter is. The true parameter is somewhere between 21.8 and 38.2%, which is a pretty wide interval. And the only way to, do, to, to fix that is to make my margin of error smaller. Well, how do I make that smaller? I make the standard deviation smaller. And in the last week, we learned about making the standard deviation smaller by increasing the sample size. So I'd have to survey more people. That's the only way to make my confidence interval more precise. So is there statistical evidence to support the homecoming committees to continue holding the dance? Should they keep holding the dance? Well, they need 40% of CCHS students to go. And unfortunately, I don't think 40% of CCHS students are going to go. Why do I think that? Well, I have statistical evidence that tells me the true proportion is less than 40%. So since 40% is not in my confidence interval, is not in my interval, um, I have evidence, I have evidence the true proportion the parameter, I, I'm thinking about the parameter here, the true proportion is less than 40%. The true proportion is less than 40%. So not only am I saying it's unlikely to occur, I now have evidence. I'm kind of giving, giving my readers something saying, I think this is where the true parameter is. I'm not just saying, no, you're wrong, like we did last week. I'm saying this is where I think, the, this is where I think that true proportion is. One more problem for this lesson. So in a snack pack of goldfish, everyone loves goldfish, the snack that smiles back. I gotta love the cheddar ones. I'm not a fan of the the, the flavor blasted cheddar ones, just the just the plain old plain old cheddar or the original ones or pretzel ones, but those don't smile back. Pretzels don't smile back. Cheddar ones do. Only 27 of the 60 goldfish had a smile. So believe it or not, not all the goldfish in the snack that smiles back actually smile back at you. The next time you eat goldfish, Notice they're not all smiling, only some of them smile. So my sample proportion here, my sample proportion was 27 out of 60. 27 out of 60 goldfish, which is 0.45. About 45% 40, of my goldfish smiled back. Create and interpret a 95% confidence interval for the true proportion of goldfish that smile back. So that was my sample proportion. Let's take into account the fact that this is a sample and there's going to be variability whenever I take a sample. So p hat plus or minus two square roots of p hat, one minus p hat over n. That's how I create a confidence interval for a sample proportion. So 0.45 plus or minus two square roots of 0.45, one minus 0.45 over n. I sampled 60 goldfish. That's it. Type it on in. 0.45 plus two square roots of alpha y equals enter of 0.45 times the opposite of 0.45, which is 0.55. That's the one minus there over, I sampled 60 goldfish in my snack pack. 0.578. So my upper bound is 0.578. Um, on web work, when you do the problems, I think I want you to go to four decimal places to be safe. Um, but I'm just doing three right now. And I need to do that all again, but with a lower bound. So I'm going to change that to a minus. One, two, three, four, five. A little bit more. Minus, and my lower bound is 0.322. So my lower bound is 0.322. That's my confidence interval. What the heck does that interval mean? Well, what does that mean? We are 95% confident that 
the true proportion that the true proportion of goldfish that smile back that's what we're studying here the true proportion of goldfish that smile is between what's that true proportion between 32.2 percent and 57.8 percent again that's a pretty wide interval there but i had a very small sample size of 60 that it doesn't give me good certainty there so that's where I think the true proportion is. The true proportion of goldfish that smile is between 32.2% and 57.8%. Uh, Pepperidge Farm claims that the true proportion is 40%. Do we have statistical evidence to reject their claim? Can I reject? Pepperidge Farm says 40% of my goldfish will smile back. That's the true proportion. Do I have evidence to reject that claim? And the answer is no, I don't. I don't have evidence. No, we cannot reject that claim. We cannot reject their claim as 40% falls in our confidence interval. It is a plausible value. It, this is the interval of plausible values for that true proportion. It is a plausible value for the true proportion. For the true proportion of smiling goldfish so they said it was 40 percent i can't tell them they're wrong i'm not proving that they're right i have no idea what the true proportion is i'm pretty sure it's between 32.2 percent and 57.8 percent i have no idea where it could be anywhere in there but i don't have evidence to say you know what pepperidge farms you're wrong it could be 40 percent. so i can't say that they're wrong but i also can't say that they're right but it could be a true value so this lesson was all about sample proportions. In the next lesson, we're going to do this all again with sample means. And luckily, it's not much different. So I'll see you there.